Welcome to Nevada. I don't care what anybody thinks of me. When you come out to Nevada, it's a little bit different. This whole state's run by about four people, and they're cowboys. Still a very small state, and you can get on the phone and talk to the governor if you want to. That everybody sort of went to school together, everybody knows each other's families. You can sit down at breakfast and uh, get next to you might be the governor. Uh, you go to a ball game and it might be a state senator. Nevada has this image of being this conservative state, and it's really not. Mormons would live in Las Vegas. Not only do they live in Las Vegas, they control a good deal of Las Vegas. Everything from the Wild West mentality to the, the relatively small numbers of voters that get to decide very important elections. This is a destination city. Now, Las Vegas doesn't tend to be a place people are driving through. It's quite a ways away from Reno, actually, you know, hundreds of miles away. I think the other thing people don't realize how big Nevada is, uh, it's, it's huge. We've always been an us-against-them kind of a state. I mean, we make California look downright prudish. Alcohol is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. State built on gambling. Bars never close. And in Las Vegas, Clark County, there's two liquor wholesalers. Lowest church attendance in the nation. We have a history of letting them blow up bombs here, um, wanting to store nuclear uh, fuel here, and so Nevada sort of has a little bit of an inferiority complex. It's now jumped to the forefront, you know, and it's a hotbed and, and politically active, which is a, a tremendous thing for a small state. Had Al Gore gotten 16,000 more votes in Nevada, Florida would have been irrelevant. From 1932 to about 1992, Democrats dominated the state. When I moved here, it was predominantly Republican. Uh, Republicans had a, had a pretty firm uh, lock on all the levers of power, and essentially the Democratic Party was Harry Reid and whoever you get to show up in a meeting. This is a heavy union state. Um, you know, much, of, much of the labor here, uh, from the Culinary Union to uh, the SEIU, um, a lot of union members, and, and the union members tend to still be conservative. What we've seen is a total reverse fortune there. The Republican Party has more or less imploded. They've gone through lots and lots of chairs. They've got no money. We're just angry with mismanagement. And again, kind of whether you're conservative or moderate or liberal, nobody wants mismanagement. So we have a part-time legislature meets uh, 120 days every other year. We pride ourselves on what we call our citizen legislators. That invites a lot of, well, it's called non-professional. In general, there's just not a lot of governmental structure here. These are some of the things that frustrated me. I was very frustrated by not being able to contact my representative, not getting an email, no, nothing, crickets. <laughs> you have unknowns running for office all the time here, and they get elected, and I think that keeps it fresh. Uh, are you trustworthy and honest, and you got any ethics, and so, you know, that runs a little short somewhere around here sometimes. <laughs> That's a bad. <laughs> That's that. That's called a tell. The federal government owning so much in Nevada is a problem. Uh, they own 88 percent of Nevada, I think, at last count. It's in our Constitution. We gave that up to become a state. But it also means that nobody pays property tax. We do not have a state income tax. It's outlawed in our state Constitution. Nevada does not have corporate business taxes here. So Walmart and Home Depot, they come in here, they don't pay any taxes on their profits. We have a pretty high sales tax, um, but a third of that is paid by visitors. We collect more in rental uh, money from the rental car tax than we do from the mining industry. We're an economy driven on gaming and tourism. And gaming's built on easy money and there's not a lot of that around. You know, when I was Lieutenant Governor in the 80s, we were one of nine states with gambling, racetracks or anything. We're one of 48 now. Gaming has, has reported losses, I want to say 23 months in a row. They're that sort of high paying job here is probably not going to come back. Uh, Nevada huh, is not going to come back to our peak, I don't think. We, as much as any state, went big on the housing bubble, and that bubble has burst. Really, really bad foreclosure rate here. Um, if you saw the map of the foreclosures that are in North Las Vegas alone, you wouldn't even be able to see the boundaries or the streets highest unemployment rate in the entire country and that we're number one in foreclosures. I worked the same job for 11 years and got laid off. And thankful for my boyfriend who gets Social Security, I have a place to live. We deliver over 5,000 meals a month here in Reno. Today I got seven tents delivered to the house. I got two more coming from Iowa tomorrow. What you see here 
think maybe more so than a lot of other states is the downside of the boom. St. Vincent's dining room, they're feeding 200, 200, 300 more people a day than they were a year ago. And it's an issue that it's nationwide. Uh, but again, they closed all the state hospitals and put them out on the street. So whether it's right or wrong, I, I really don't know. And I'd love to get in the middle of the debate of it because I think you got to help people. And if that makes me a liberal, then paint me liberal. So there you have it. Perhaps no place in the nation has been hit harder by the recession than the Silver State. And everybody from top to bottom knows that Nevada needs to change. But where do they go from here? That's where you come in. We want to hear from you. Comment on this video here. Go to VoteIQ.com and comment there. Make your own video and tag it with VoteIQ. But get involved in the conversation. And let these people in Nevada politics know what the great state of Nevada needs to become one of the best in the West again. We look forward to hearing what you have to say, and until next time, I'll see you on the road. Oh, I think I lost my pants. Ugh.